Good morning everybody, it's Friday this week, and I have another video update for everyone. Unfortunately, where I spoke of getting the Older Planet program running in the last video, and having a victory against Planet in Windows 7, unfortunately today we must deal with Defeat. This machine was the one you saw in the previous couple videos I did regarding its hard drive and it needing to be changed. Well, I put the new hard drive in and went to clone the hard drive over to it and discovered that I couldn't do that. Okay, fine, figured the old hard drive was no good. I will simply do a system restore from scratch as I ha have the system restoration discs for this machine. <laughs> no problem. I go to restore the machine and I find that I can't do that. Well, when you have problems doing basic things like formatting a hard drive or doing a system restore on a computer that always points to a hardware issue. And this machine does have a hardware issue. And the hardware issue is that this machine cannot detect the presence of either the CD-ROM or the hard drive and I did a whole bunch of research this is a Hewlett Packard P6210Y with a custom manufactured ASUS motherboard that's been manufactured to Hewlett Packard's specifications and after doing the research I found out what the problem is but first, in order for you to understand the problem, I need to explain some basic motherboard logic. So here we go. Motherboards, which is this. The motherboard is this big green board right here. Motherboards, when they come brand new, they have nothing on them. I call these strip motherboards. These are the motherboards that I buy all the time when I do a custom build system for somebody. They're stripped. They don't have the processor on them and they don't have the memory on them. And they sometimes don't even have graphics hardware other than a graphics slot because a lot of times I use external video cards to handle the computer's graphics needs. And then what I do during the build of the system is I make it into what I call a dressed motherboard. In other words, I put the I put the CPU and the heatsink on it, which is this big fan right here where my finger is that's spinning right now because it's on. The memory chips are located in these slots over here and on this particular motherboard you also have a graphics chip which is located right here where this silver heatsink is and we're going to come back to this heatsink in a minute because it's extremely important and the cause of all of our issues. Now data when the system is running data has to be able to get from the CPU to the memory and sometimes to this big PCI Express slot right here where a video card may or may not be sitting in this case there's no card in there at high speed this is called the data bus and then you also have some lower speed devices in the system such as your 
SATA host adapter, which you can't really see good. There's, well, maybe you can, I think you can. It's actually these four sockets right here are for the SATA host adapter. And the CD-ROM and the hard drive plug into these. You also have things like the USB and the sound ports that are lower speed adapters. Now, on a normal motherboard, the management of getting the data between all these adapters is handled by two chips called the North Bridge and the South Bridge. The North Bridge chip is usually will have a heat sink and it usually will be placed fairly close to the CPU. The heat sink will be very similar to this one. The South Bridge chip will be another square integrated circuit about the same size somewhere located down closer to the edge to the bottom edge of the motherboard. You may notice that this particular motherboard does not have or appear to have a South Bridge chip or an internal graphics processing unit for the internal graphics which is this plug right here. The reason for that is Hewlett Packard in their infinite wisdom when they had these motherboards specked out by ASUS decided to combine the functions of the North Bridge, the South Bridge, and the graphics processing unit into one chip. This chip right here. And they stuck a passive heatsink on it. It's called a passive heatsink because it has no fan. This is a passive heatsink. This is an active heatsink. It has a fan, so we call it active. The problem with having the three, th three function chip on a passive heatsink is that this chip gets extremely, extremely hot in normal operation. If I were to touch this chip right now, I probably would get burned. I'm not going to touch it because I know how hot it is. I can actually feel the heat coming off it from my finger. Now that I got my finger up close. And the problem with these chips is the passive heat sink is not adequate enough to cool the multifunction chip off. And eventually it's going to overheat and it's going to actually start burning the IC chip itself which is going to damage it and when that happens the first thing that happens is this SATA host adapter over here dies and when the SATA host adapter dies the machine can't see its hard drive or its CD-ROM which on a Hewlett Packard will most often result in a situation like this where it's frozen at the HP BIOS screen and I can let it sit there and sit there and sit there for a few minutes and it might if I'm lucky go into the BIOS and if it were to go into the BIOS right now I would see where it has the information for all four SATA adapters it would say none on all four of them even though it has a CD-ROM drive connected right now because the SATA host adapter is dead. It can't pick up its CD-ROM. It can't pick up its hard drive either. The, the most that I could get this computer to pick up would be occasionally if the computer had been off for a long enough period of time to allow the multi-function chip to cool off enough to let it see the hard drive and the CD-ROM just for a few minutes. Unfortunately, this isn't really long enough to do anything with the machine. And in my research, 
some have this some have thought that they could put in an external SATA host adapter into one of the expansion slots back here and have it work. In theory it can. The problem with this in practice is that the I.O. input output to these slots other other is also controlled by this multi-function chip so because this chip is damaged eventually you're not going to be able to get any input output to any of these slots and your brand new SATA host adapter that you just put in here isn't going to work in the worst case scenario what you will get eventually with this machine is you'll get video that fails to work. We haven't got we haven't quite gotten there yet, but we're heading down that road real fast. Another thing that people have said is if you catch this if you know about this problem early enough before the chip is damaged you can pull the heat sink, you can pull this heat sink off, you can order an aftermarket heat sink, and you can install it, that want a heat sink that is active, and it will keep the chip cool. Some people have done this, unfortunately for this machine, it is too late, the chip is already damaged. Once the chip is damaged, that's it, the damage is done. Unfortunately, where we stand now is we have to extract the data off of the customer's hard drive and put it in a format that we can put it back on another machine that the customer has, and then we'll go from there. The only place this machine is going is the local transfer station. I'm, there's a lot of people, if you get on the HP forums, and I will provide a link to the, um, to the HP forums where they talk about this issue, there's a lot of people that are really PO'd, and I don't blame them. HP refuses to acknowledge this issue in any way, shape, or form. And the reason that they refuse to acknowledge it is because if they did, they would have to pay to replace these motherboards out of pocket. And just to get this motherboard brand new from Hewlett Packard is $425. That's just for the part people. That doesn't even involve any of the labor required to put the new motherboard in. And then on top of that, you still have a motherboard that has the factory defect in it of the multifunction chip with the passive heatsink. So now you have to pull the heatsink off and modify it, like I said earlier, with an active heatsink. Poor design and poor engineering HP, shame on you. I thought you of all companies would know better. HP makes great printers. I would buy one of their printers in a second. I have had many HP printers over the years, and especially my last two printers, I have put through hell as they do a lot of printing, copying, scanning, and faxing for the office in here. They never miss the beat. HP computers, on the other hand, nah, not really. HP computers is not HP's core competency. They should have stuck. They should have stuck with printers. And when you get into things that aren't your core competency and strength without doing the research to find things out or without having the people that have the knowledge that can let you know what's okay to do and not okay to do, this is what happens. Unfortunately, this is a bad product and there's not a darn thing we can do about it.
I will see everyone next time. Again, as I always say, comment, rate, and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments what you want to see. If you want to see me do something specific, I'll do that. If you don't like what I'm doing or want me to change the way I do things around a little bit, I'll do that too. Just let me know. I will see everyone soon. Thank you and bye-bye.